Hello and welcome to another edition of Coach's Corner. Dave Serrano is currently on location, uh, I believe in Alaska. Uh, He was in California. He's a busy man this time of year doing, not only is he coaching summer ball, but he's running show ball camps uh, all over the country, soon to be in Boston. And I'm really excited today because this is a guest that uh, I really consider to be one of the elite coaches in all of college baseball. And I've been anxious to, to try and get him after the season wound down. And today we're going to talk Big South Conference as well as Campbell University. And our guest today is head coach Justin here. And Justin, I want to say thank you for taking the time to, uh, to join us here. Yeah, man, looking forward to it and appreciate uh, appreciate what you're doing for the game, what you've always done for the game, and glad to jump on and, and chop it up a little bit. Well, I think where I want to start, Justin, is, uh, you know, as you and I discussed before we jumped on uh, to the to the live uh, call here, is, is really Campbell has always been that rising from the earth type of program to me, starting way back in 2015 and 16. Uh, and I started to hear rumblings of Campbell's really turning a corner. Campbell's really turning. And that's a tuss- testament to you and your coaching staff. But I'd like to begin by having you share with uh, all of our watchers and listeners how you began to build your program, you know, as far as you're in a hotbed of college baseball in the Carolinas. So I think it's really an exciting story to share with with parents as well as student athletes. Yeah, I think that for us, you know, we got here, um, I, I came here as an assistant for Greg Goff um, in 2000. We got here in the fall of 2007. So our first season was 2008. We got here, there's 19 Division One schools in the state of North Carolina, and Campbell was coming off a year in 2007 that they were 11 and 45. And so we were probably really near the bottom of that 19 team list um, with, with so many good programs in our state. And we found out really fast that that if you try or if we would try to recruit um, like they had recruited in the past, we were probably going to get similar results. Right. You know, and, and, and not a knock on North Carolina high school kids or, or anything along those lines. We've had plenty of those that are very successful. We needed to find a niche that was really, you know, kind of spoke to who we we are and, and where we could get you know, more talented players and and, and kind of really figure out what worked for us. And so that's kind of where it started was like, well, we're at the bottom and, and we need to, you know, we have visions of, of what this place can be and we need to be able to to work towards that. And so what what we eventually found out was that that having a combination of both junior college players and high school players was was the right fit for us, bringing guys in from all over the country. I think we've got 18 or 19 different states wow. represented um, on our roster, we got three different countries. Um, we got a kid from Australia, a kid from Canada, obviously a bunch of kids from America. We've had kids from Venezuela. We've had, you know, a little bit all over the place. But that diversity and and that ability to go kind of anywhere and find guys that fit our program was really the niche that we needed to find with our private school. It's the same cost if you're from across the street or across the country or across the globe. And so what we needed to figure out was how we were going to get on airplanes and rental cars and 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 find these guys kind of from all over the country that wanted to come here to Campbell right in the middle of tobacco and cotton fields and have a baseball college experience that that revolves around getting your degree. Winning, competing and winning for winning championships and finding out how good of a baseball player and a person you can be. We call it development without distraction. There's not an 80,000 seat football stadium across across the street. There's not a Saturday morning tailgate that everybody needs to get to. Like it's about being a baseball school and finding out how good of a baseball player and a person you can become. And when we started to piece those things together, then then we were able to kind of really hone in on an identity that that we could kind of wrap ourselves around. Well, A baseball school. So just for point of reference to those parents or student athletes that may not uh, follow Campbell uh, as of right now as closely as you you probably should. We're talking about an 800 plus winning percentage this year. We're talking about a top uh, 10, top 15 program in the country. Uh, Oh, by the way, your out of conference schedule is 
extremely competitive. I mean, you're not, you know, kind of walking away from the, you know, or shying away from the big guys. I mean, you play a very competitive schedule, not only in the big South, but, you know, outside your conference. I mean, you're talking a lot of good quality college baseball programs in your neck of the woods. Yeah. You know, again, I think, you know, anytime, you know, I mean, within an hour and a half of us, I mean, we've got Duke, North Carolina, NC State, literally within an hour of us. You got East Carolina, an hour and a half. You got UNC Wilmington, an hour and a half. You got Elon and UNC Greensboro, an hour and a half. Like, I mean, the amount of top 50 caliber in-state programs that we have within a 90-minute drive of us is 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 insane. So midweek scheduling is like you can schedule it literally as hard as you want to try to schedule in the midweek for, for the most part piecing together some of those non-conference early early season schedule, you know, early season games. We had Rutgers here this year. We went down to Louisiana Lafayette. We played at Tulane as well. Um, we've got UC Santa Barbara coming in next year. We're at Georgia Southern. We've got Texas State on, on future schedules. You've got home and home with UNC. Like, the, the key for us is that we want to be able and situated to be able to play whoever, whenever, wherever, so that if and when we get that opportunity to be in, in in the NCAA tournament, which we've had a chance to be in the last five, we're prepared for for rolling into Tennessee or Mississippi State or or, or South Carolina or whatever the case may be, and get in there and 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 not be awed by the big stadium and not be intimidated by what it says across the front of their jersey. We can show up and we can play our nine innings of our brand of baseball and 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 take our chances because we're prepared. And we've been all the places and we've seen all the things and, and we've played all the top teams. Um, and, and I think that that's a, a huge benefit to our guys, to the player experience, but certainly to our opportunity to, to play deep into June. And I, and I want to go back and talk a little bit about that development aspect, you know, for parents and again, student athletes, for, from an edification standpoint, I want to bring you up to speed. Last year, Campbell had a first round draft pick uh where did he go six overall where did he 13th. go 13th yeah 13th exactly. overall yeah and, and now he's in the big leagues <laughs> uh and this year we have potentially you know two more top 50 overall picks so talk a little bit about this it's it, to me it's fascinating because when you start talking about the carolinas as you just alluded to with all those great baseball programs to have these caliber athletes being developed at campbell University speaks volumes about your coaching staff, about you as a head coach, more importantly, but your coaching staff, this is truly a developmental program for those student athletes that aspire to play at the game's highest levels. Yeah, I I mean, I think, um, you know, where we started to really, you know, make a transition, we were at, at the Georgia Regional in 2018. We blew a big lead against Duke in an elimination game, and we ended up going home 0 and 2. We had a seven to one lead in the seventh and we ended up blowing it. We just kind of ran out of arms and we came back and we were standing in our conference room, kind of looking at our facility. And we just thought we've got to get better at developing guys. We have to get better at developing guys on the mound. We have to like, we're we're good at it, but there's another level that we need to get to. If we want to get to Omaha, we've got to invest more of our time, our talents, our, our, our energies into having a plan to allow these guys to get better so that when we do get in those situations, we can punch our way through a a loser's bracket. We can finish off games that, that, you know, traditionally we would maybe not be supposed to supposed to have won. And so we've done that. And, 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 and and we've taken a huge chunk of how we used to, to coach and how we used to develop guys in the fall or used to develop our program in the fall and, and switched it around where that fall, the fall is such a huge piece for develop. It's the biggest chunk of time that we have to develop our guys' stuff, to develop their skills, and compete less. In the spring, we're going to compete fit for 90 straight days or 100 straight days and 60 games in those 100 days. And you got your five weeks that, that now we treat more like a spring training than the – the the fall used to be like a spring training like you're going to inter squat a bunch and you're gonna, like hey man like what we're going to do is we're going to spend a lot of time in the weight room man we're going to get bigger we're going to get faster we're going to get stronger we're going to develop our our skill set and our tools and then we're going to blend in the competition piece and sometimes that that blend might come from off the field or or non baseball related competition things that we can kind of pair together 
But man, when we get back, we're going to be in the best position we possibly can be to go out there and, and throw our best punch from day one. I mean, I absolutely love that. It's a tremendous concept. You know, sometimes you'll see a lot of programs, uh, you know, they get ultra competitive in the fall and uh, the development piece kind of falls off. And I love to hear that. And earlier uh, when we, we were talking before we jumped on, you, you gave me some great numbers as far as how you're recruiting as a, as, a, as a school. And I found that to be really fascinating. If you could share that with, with the parents and the student athletes, because everybody's worried about the portal and the transfers and the, the role of the high school athlete is no longer a big deal and everybody's poo-pooing the high school athlete. But you gave me some refreshing uh, information and thoughts on that. Could you share that here? Yeah, I think for us, the 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 makeup of our roster, and, and this is really where we've been, you know, when we're consistent and, and really close to these numbers, we're normally successful. When we sway one way or the other is when we start to, to kind of go a little bit sideways and have to kind of course correct. But essentially, and, and, and if we have 40 guys on our roster, I promise you, Walter, I mean, it is almost right down the middle. We are about 50% junior college um, and or transfers, have a couple of guys out of the portal, but not a ton, um, it, but mostly junior college guys. We have 50% of high school student athletes. Of the 50% of junior college guys, it's about 70% position players and 30% pitchers. And of the high school position players, it's the exact opposite, about 70% pitchers and 30% position players. So if we're investing in high school position players, we feel like those are guys that are going to be able to come in right away and have an impact in our lineup somewhere. Um, if we're investing in high school arms, we feel like those guys are going to be able to come in, develop over the course of time, be able to, to provide stability through their three or four years within our program, which gives us a rock solid foundation at the most important position, which is on the mound and, and allows us to build the extra pieces through some older, more physical body guys at different positions, corner outfield, first base, corner infield, some of those things. Most of our high school position players are catchers, shortstop center fielders, and, and are guys that we're going to spend some money on because we feel like they can impact us early. One of the things that I find so interesting about Campbell University is it's almost when you're watching, I think this might be a reflection now after having spent some time being able to speak with you here today, your energy on the field as a team, is that something you work a lot on? Because every time I watch Campbell University play, it's it, this fire. I mean, there's there's a lot of energy. So is this something that that's the type of student athlete you tend to focus or try to attract? Or is that something that you as a staff really kind of implement into your fall, uh, you know, development time period? Probably a little bit of both. I think that it's, you know, I think you tend to to be attracted to people that that maybe reflect some of your own, you know, energy or thoughts or, or, or passions. And so we want guys to to. That, that play with a high motor that bounce around. We want guys that, that play with the chip on their shoulder, quite honestly, man, like we're not the sexiest name in, in college baseball. That's okay. Like we, we thrive on that. Like we, we thrive on, on, on feeling like we're underestimated um, and maybe looked over a little bit. Our guys like that underdog mentality. I think that's a little bit of who we are because Again, there's not a there's not a pro baseball card with with my picture or stats on the back. Like I was a really good college bullpen catcher, not a really good like bullpen. Catch, like I caught a lot of innings in the bullpen, not necessarily like we're here because we work hard and, and we love what we do. And we want kids that want to work hard and love what they do and and let that show through. And I think that that's part of the energy from me and our staff and certainly from our players, because. We, we want them to, to love what they're doing. We want them to love each other. And, and we want them to, to allow that passion and that excitement to kind of come out and, 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 and be true and, and, and uh, authentic. Well, boy, oh, boy, thanks to ESPN Plus, I get to watch a lot of Campbell baseball. And I can truly tell you, uh, it's always a pleasure. Well, I watch all nine innings because I just <laughs> love, you know, I think it was a Gardner Webb game maybe, or uh, there was a one game that was really high-spirited, and, and uh, I really loved watching that. One thing that I really want student athletes to understand is the, the high school student athlete is not a dying, uh, you know, recruiting 
type of capable athlete. But talk a little bit about now about this new rule with regard to, you know, sophomores having to wait until the end of their rising uh, junior fall. Is that good for Campbell? And explain that you're still watching. You just can't interact. I think parents have this big misunderstanding gap that nobody's paying attention to the to the freshmen and sophomores of the world. But you are, but you just can't talk to them until that junior fall. Yeah, I think that, I, I, honestly, I think overall it, it is a better situation, not just for us. I just think for the – if it ends up really lining out how it's supposed to and and everyone will try to find a way – not everyone, but people will try to find ways around every rule. Um, if it if it is actually how, it, how it's intended to, it, it will be a good effect because, again, I've got, I've got a nine-year-old son. I'm 42 years old. I've got, I'm nine, eight, five, and two. I got four kids. But like, if I ask my nine year old, like what he wants for dinner or, or like, he's going to say, I want spaghetti, dad. Great. Like, Hey bud, I made you spaghetti. It's your favorite. Dad, I don't want spaghetti tonight. Like I'm, I'm out like, and, and we're sitting there talking about, there are, there are kids that are 13, 14, 15 years old that are saying like, Hey, when I'm 18 through 22, like this is, I know for a fact, this is where I want to be. Like, golly that's that's a lot of pressure and 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 th- th- i mean i just i don't think it's good for the game i don't think it's good for the kids like i like i don't think it's good for the coaches like nope. i i would rather my coaches be watching 16 and 17 year olds instead of 14 and 15 year olds i think we're going to have a better gauge for what they they might be at 18 and 19 by watching them when they're 16 and 17 like it's just it is ultra competitive and there is there is a press for time. But I do think that the new rules will have to adjust to them. We're still watching. We're still evaluating. We're we might just actually be better at the evaluation process if we have a little bit more time where there aren't as many misses and there's not as many, you know, nightmare stories about, well, I was committed to this school for four years. And then right before signing day, I never got my NLI. You know, and, you know, I missed out on three years of recruiting because I was committed to this coaching staff and they left or they got fired or, or they're not at the school anymore. And and now, I, I'm, ne- you know, everybody's moved on to the to the 14 year olds and I'm 17 and nobody's here watching me like there's a million of those stories. And, and so I think it allows kids to enjoy their time, hopefully as freshmen and sophomore a little bit more and on the travel ball circuit a little bit more. It allows coaches to to maybe take a breath once the season gets done and 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 really hone in on on what's important to them, and hopefully slowing this process down gets us back to a, a little bit, and it won't get all the way there because you got the portal and you got things, right. but gets us back to a more of a a, a a a pure sense of of evaluating and recruiting kids and really actually being able to to build some relationships with people. Now, this is a question. Uh, I've, I've been waiting to ask you, I, I've, I've yet to ask this on anyone I've interviewed up to this date. And I think that you're the perfect uh, coach to ask this question, to have you discuss this topic. When I talk with parents, I always try to get them to understand when you're talking about your student athlete, your child, those four to five years possibly in college are going to be considered for the most part, the best years of your life. We don't need to worry about professional baseball. That only happens for a microscopic number of student athletes, maybe a handful uh, from any different region of the country. But can you talk about the collective college experience, even off the baseball field? Because you've been around since 2007, 2008. You've had student athletes now that have children of their own. They're, They're coaching. They're doing... So can you talk about that dynamic so that parents and student athletes have a better understanding of really what college is supposed to be all about? Yeah. You know, again, I I think that that's, you know, I think being able to piece together that, that the time that you spend in college playing college athletics, especially is, is quite honestly, like the most cherished piece of 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 your growing up there's so many things that happen during that time so many fun experiences so many great things but like i'll give you an example walter i was fortunate enough to officiate the wedding of one of our alumni this past fall and um he played for us 
um, graduated in 2018. He's from Jacksonville, Florida, was a junior college transfer and um, met his wife here at Campbell. She was a cheerleader. Um, she's from, you know, Virginia. He's from Jacksonville, Florida. We do do his wedding and he's got nine groomsmen of the nine groomsmen. Seven of them were Campbell baseball players and six of the nine or six of those seven were from different states outside of the state of Florida. Like, and two of this, those six or seven weren't even on the same team as him. Like they didn't even play together, but they were here and they like, they were a year off and they were, you know, they had crossover friend, like all, like that's the college experience in a nutshell. You meet your best friends here. You probably meet the love of your life here. You probably, the people that you will go on vacation with that will be the godparents of your children that you will do the rest of your life with is, is who you meet at college and the people that stand up for you at your wedding and have your back in every situation. And that's what we're trying to build and create and, and, and cultivate at a place like this. And, and, and if we're not doing that, then we're not really investing in the entire life of our student athletes. And that's, what's so special about college athletics. And that's why it's really important that, that you know what you're getting into on where you're going, that it's not just a, well, this is a two year thing so that I can go get drafted and I can listen, man, baseball's going to end for all of us. It might Amen. end at 18, 22, 45. I don't know when it gets to end. I don't have that crystal ball, but you better have the relationships and you better have the experiences that you can fall back on and the teammates and, and the brothers and, and the friends that, that you met at college um, are the ones that are going to have your back from, from now until, you know, we're, we're unfortunately laying on our deathbed. Amen. I mean, and really I couldn't have asked for a better, I mean, that truly symbolizes and, and embodies exactly what we try to talk to parents about. This is so bigger, much bigger than baseball. This is a 40, 50 year decision it has nothing to do with major leagues and draftability and, NIL and all this other crazy stuff that we want to talk about. Uh, and I'm so glad that I was able to ask you that question. And now, obviously, when this, when when people listen to this, they're going to say, geez, I want to be a part of Campbell. Is it camps? Is it email? I mean, how is somebody going to reach out to Campbell University or Coach Hare and say, hey, I want to be, I want to be a Campbell. I want to be part of your program. How, how, how do you recommend that they do that? Yeah, I mean, camps is 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 the greatest piece. The prospect camp process for us, um, I think, is really really important, especially now with the new rules where you get a chance to come on campus and we can, when you're at camp, we can talk to you, we can interact with you, we can walk you around around campus, we can take you through the facility. You get a really good snapshot of what we're about, what our school's about, what what we look for, um, and you get a chance to perform on on our on our on our um, surface. CamelsBaseballCamps.com is 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 our our camp website. Um, following us on on social media at Go Camels Baseball is really important to get a, an inside view of what that looks like. Myself at jhair 3 on on Twitter is is an important piece. DMing us and and sending us video where man like like if if you send me a a, a twenty second video. I may not respond to you, but I'm probably going to watch your video. And if you and if and if you're somebody that catches our eye, that's going to go into a file and into our, our recruiting um, coordinator's hands and so on and so forth. Now, that doesn't mean that every kid that sends us a video is going to get a response from us, but it's going to get watched. And and that snapshot and that opportunity in, with free media right now is is the quickest and fastest way, I think, to get the attention of any college coach. Well, I, I, I for one, I, I can truly, uh, I, we talk to a lot of college coaches. We talk to coaches from all across the country, all levels, all divisions. But I can tell you that if you kind of take a look back from 2023 all the way back to, you know, I would say for me, my first uh, interaction with Campbell was when Tyler was, uh, you know, going through the process and playing for the Canes. Dynamic university, dynamic uh, school and coaching staff and for student athletes and parents that may be unfamiliar with the big south if you take the time you know too many people are over infatuated with the power five i can truly tell you that if you took a look this year particularly 
at the top 25 throughout the season, you saw a lot of schools, Campbell, you saw UConn, you saw some schools that, you know, might not necessarily roll off the top of your tongue, but they are ultra competitive. They have elite coaching staffs and they are definitely a nationally um, recognized program uh, by all the college coaches across the country. So Justin, I want to say thank you. I know it's your busy time of year. I appreciate you taking some time to join us. Uh, I hope all goes well this summer. If I can ever, or Coach Serrano can ever be of help in any way, please let us know. But how, what's the best uh, way for people? Do you want them to email you or direct message you? Because I'm going to get that question. Yeah, D- yeah, DM me. That's the that's the easiest, fastest way. You know, uh, emails, man, we get a million emails and a million different things. Like DMing me on, on Twitter is probably the, the fastest and most effective way. Um, we're the the nature of the beast of of college athletics right now is that we're on social media all the time um we get our we get our news just like everybody else in 30 second snippets and and um you know that's just kind of part of of today's today's world I, I, it's not as simple as you know when i was growing up and my dad just had a newspaper delivered man like you know <laughs> our newspapers on our phone and and uh and it's called twitter or, or instagram or or whatever and and so that's the quickest and easiest way to, to get a hold of us or get in front of us. And, and uh, I, I think that's, you know, for me, that's, that's the best way to, to reach out. So you heard coach, let's start blowing up his Twitter. Let's follow <laughs> and let's get him some DMS because he's not busy enough. So I want to, I want to say thank you to everyone for joining us tonight. The baseball blue book is really uh, helping spread the word, create information and edification with regard to the entire college process not just with regard to baseball justin best of luck not only this summer and into the fall but next season i will be watching for sure thanks walter appreciate you captain thank you bud